Hi, and uh, welcome to the second lecture on uh, separable ordinary differential equations. For the lecture today, I am going to look at one problem and explain certain new concepts in the context of this problem. So here we are asked to solve uh, y prime is equal to 3x squared over 3y squared minus 4 with the initial condition that y of 1 is equal to 0. Well, we have solved similar problems in the previous lecture. What is new here is item B. Find the interval of validity of the solution. What do we mean by that? That takes a little bit of work and some explanation. So the interval of validity of a solution of a differential equation is the largest interval on x-axis containing the initial condition on which y prime is continuous. Okay, what, what does that mean? So that's going to take a bit of work to explain what that means and then you are going to have some uh, homework problems uh, similar to this that you will uh, spend quite a bit of time on it. So, uh, first solving part A that's going to be straightforward. So we are going to start with uh, writing it in Leibniz notation dy dx is equal to 3x squared over 3y squared minus 4 cross multiply this to get 3y squared minus 4 dy is equal to 3x squared dx uh, integrate both sides now integration is going to be straightforward it's going to be y cubed minus 4y and it's going to be x cubed plus some constant to figure out the constant we go back to the initial condition so this is our initial condition initial condition means that when x is equal to 1 y has to be 0 our solution has to pass through this point and uh, this point is mentioned containing the initial condition meaning containing the x of the initial condition so for y I put 0 so I just copy that for x I put uh, 1 so obviously uh, uh, in this side is 0 is 1 plus c so my constant of the problem is minus 1. Uh, so my solution by now has come down to the following y cubed minus 4y is equal to x cubed minus 1. This is the answer to part A. So we might as well box it so that we know this is uh, some milestone here. Answer to part 1. <coughs> now as we looked at this type of problem last time uh, the curve that matches this equation is going to be rather complicated uh, curve. The question is that we want to say something about that curve. Uh, the topic that we have in mind is the interval of uh, existence. That is uh, the new topic we are going to look at or interval of validity of the solution. What is valid? What is invalid? The concept uh, is very similar to the concept of do domain of a function that you have seen in pre-calculus. So let's go back and take a look at <coughs> some uh, basic exercises from that topic. And then we are going to extend it to here and see what is it about the solution that uh, limits the interval to a particular set of x values. Let's uh, so we are going to uh, take a uh, little bit of a detour here to explain what this concept is. So you remember the concept of domain of a function. So I'm going to look at some functions not related to this problem just to refresh your memory about what was the issues related to domain of a function. So here 
is uh, some y and x that's not connected to the previous problem. Suppose I have a function, I call it f of x, and here's a simple example, 1 over say x minus 3. So remember, uh, this is a relationship between an x and a y, and uh, x takes on real numbers. However, certain numbers are going to create an issue for us. Uh, you know from elementary school the division by zero is a problematic uh, uh, point for us so the x's that result in the division by zero have to be excluded from our domain so that our function behaves in the normal and expected manner so here we go and intentionally set the denominator equal to zero find what the answer might be and then we when we want to describe the domain, we say x is other than 3 because I don't want to divide by 0. Another way of writing this is uh, say we can start from minus infinity and come all the way to 3. And then we can jump to the other side, union with 3 all the way to infinity. So what is at stake here is the issue of dealing with infinity and what it does to our uh, analysis. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at this uh, topic on Desmos just so, so that we quickly see what the issue is. So I uh, ask for the graph of 1 over x minus 3. This green line is the graph of that function you remember from pre-calculus that this is a hyperbola, an uh, important graph that uh, shows up in lots of applications including your phone. Uh, we see some peculiar behavior here that the function uh, suddenly starts to descend as our x come close to 3 from left hand side we go to a point further and further down going to minus infinity as we cross 3 go to the other side we have suddenly jumped all the way to plus infinity and then as x increases we are going to descend again so everything is normal from all the way on the left side to 3 a 3 a rupture occurs our function has gone to infinity and then on the other side of 3 again the function comes back to normal so in pre-calculus and calculus when you talk about the domain of function is the set of x's on which the value of the function is a real number meaning avoiding things such as infinity avoiding things like such as uh, complex numbers and such those are all excluded so anything from minus infinity to 3 excluding 3 and then from 3 to infinity is fair game and is considered to be domain of the function now when we come to uh, differential equation we add a, a, another layer to this issue which is the following uh, to explain it think about a process something having happened for example imagine a creature that is on one side of uh, this green line and he is traveling imagine an ant walking on this so if the ant starts here and walk backward, well, it can go all the way to minus infinity. If it walks forward, he is going to be traveling forever on this branch and going further and further down. The way he's trapped here, he can never jump to the other side. So if you start anywhere on the left branch, you're always stuck on this left branch. On the other hand, if you had initially started on the right branch, then you will forever exist on that right branch. So in the problems of differential equation, you have an initial condition, that's where you start your trip. And then if your curve takes you to uh, infinity in this fashion, then the domain of existence is going to stop right there. We are not going to jump to the other side. We don't have uh, any mechanism by which to jump to the other side. So in differential equation the domain of existence for, uh, if this was a solution that we had the domain would be from minus infinity to 3 or if the initial condition was on this side it would have been from 3 to infinity. 
it's not going to be uh, a matter of choice for you on the left or side or right rather your initial condition dictates to you as to which one of the two you have to choose so that is issue number one so uh, we are not going to write our uh, uh, domains of existence in this fashion rather we have to choose which one of these things uh, are you going to pick and that's going to be decided based on where your initial condition is so if my initial condition x was say 1 I would have picked this if my initial condition was x at say 10 I would have picked that one okay then the next issue so here we could easily see that at x equal to 3 we are dividing by uh, 0 and uh, obviously something has to be done but with the solution like this it's not quite clear where is the division where is it that uh, something unusual might happen so there are several things uh, that are at our are, are disposal that's going to help us to know where that break might happen uh, the definition is insisting that our y prime should be continuous meaning our y prime should be a real number that changes smoothly as x changes anything unusual such as y prime becoming infinity that's going to put an end to our interval of validity so sometimes we can look at our differential equation and get a clue as to where that might be so this is y prime is equal to 3x squared over 3y squared minus 4 I already know that if this denominator becomes 0 then y prime is likely very likely to become infinity so one of the things that I'm going to investigate is well where would that happen at what y is it that we have zero in the denominator obviously if x is not zero definitely I'm dividing by zero and creating a, a, a problematic spot on my solution so one clue that sometimes going to be available for us is not always uh, that easy to figure out where that event is going to happen uh, one clue is the differential equation itself is going to tell us uh, where something unusual is going to happen so I set the denominator of this thing equal to zero uh, now that's going to tell me a problematic value for y and now uh, unfortunately we still have to work more because the interval of existence is defined in terms of x not just y so here's our plan of attack we are going to set the denominator equal to zero figure out what y values are problematic then take those y values and put it in our equation figure out what the corresponding x values are going to be and then when we have those x values uh, we are going to have clues as to where the interval of validity is going to be now that's going to be quite a bit of intricate little algebra so at the level of college algebra but still a bit intricate before we dive into that let me show you what uh, this thing is going to look like on Desmos so that we have a sneak peek uh, about uh, what's going on so that our uh, activity is uh, clear to us so here I go uh, to our trusty Desmos and uh, a very useful tool uh, y cube uh, then step forward minus 4y is equal to x cube you see that uh, uh, peculiar curve showing up look uh, looks like a <coughs> meandering river now we had a bit of a hard time back in calculus graphing functions that were a lot more tame than this and so uh, uh, we are excused having a bit of a hard time uh, guessing what's uh, what's happening with these uh, uh, equations so well, the graph of our solution is such a peculiar looking uh, curve uh, kind of like a spring that you press on it and it kind of uh, jumps around and takes on a peculiar shape okay now 
what was it that we wanted we wanted the interval of validity this thing looks like it looks to me valid all over the place why would we consider anything invalid what is invalid about anything remember uh, the requirement is that the y prime has to be continuous y prime therefore has to avoid becoming infinity because well infinity is going to be hard to swallow so uh, remember what was our initial condition our initial condition was x equal to 0 and the y equal to 1 let me remind you uh, we had an initial condition here x equal to 1 y equal to 0 let's go look at this thing again let me blow this up so that uh, it is better visible okay he, uh, luckily our initial condition is a very nice uh, set of numbers x equal to 1 y equal to 0 it's just this point okay that's my initial condition now it looks reasonable to us that well you you start from here you can travel no problem travel 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 and then uh, here if you want to go forward travel 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 uh, go all over the place there is nothing uh, unvalid about anything here uh, so what is it that the problem intimating uh, let me uh, again remind you we want y prime to be a well-behaved function we want y prime to avoid becoming infinity so uh, can you think about where a problematic spot might show up where is it that y prime might become infinity so I like you to think about this and I think I'm gonna have a, a new policy of encouraging students to think for themselves I'm gonna show you a picture which of course is gonna force me to pause and force you to pause and if you like to actually like look at the picture then you better pause your video so that you can look at uh, the picture and enjoy the picture and I hope that you just take your pencil and paper uh, and start solving the problem by yourself and then uh, check your answer versus uh, what we are going to do later on so here the question is first question where is the problematic place on this picture that we are trying to find out what is it that causes a limitation on on this so-called interval at what point does it become invalid where is it that y prime is not a regular number so i'm going to pause for a second you're going to think uh, and perhaps enjoy the picture and then come back and see if your guess is the right guess okay I mistyped my uh, function here and I have to type again let's try it correct it okay so this is uh, the function we were talking about now the question is uh, did you find out where uh, y prime becomes problematic well as we move forward y prime gradually approaches minus infinity because my tangent line becomes vertical around this point my tangent line becomes vertical so y prime at that point is infinity 
and we have reached an interval or end of the interval of validity because something is happening here if I move backward again my uh, y prime by the time I reach this spot again becomes minus infinity you know my tangent line has become uh, vertical my slope has become infinity and that's going to be the beginning of the interval of validity so interval of validity is somewhere here is about minus 1 point uh, maybe 3 all the way to this point which is uh, almost 1.6 or something so visually it's easy to say where the interval of validity is just imagine two vertical bars that are trying to squeeze this graph one of them is going to hit it around here and the other one is going to hit it around here and the interval between these two excuse me is the interval of validity you're starting from here and you're going forward or backward now the question is can we use uh, just plain algebra to get the same thing so let's go back to work and uh, let's see what happens uh, how, what uh, uh, what do we do to get uh, the same effect uh, but with calculus as opposed to uh, looking at the picture okay so I rewrite uh, the equation that we had it was y prime is equal to y prime is equal to 3x squared over 3y squared minus 4 let me make sure I copied correctly okay so what we said we are going to do is obvious here that we are going to have issue when 3y squared minus 4 becomes 0 in more advanced problems that clue would not be there and we are going to have a really hard time figuring out where something is going to go wrong but here it's uh, rather easy so I go ahead and say well y squared becomes 4 third so y is going to be plus or minus square root of 4 third if you want to take 4 out of this radical that is going to be fine okay the question is well how about x to figure out the x we go back to our solution that we had so it was y cubed minus 4y is equal to uh, uh, keep forgetting x cubed minus x cubed minus 1 so I know what the y is I want to figure out what x is going to be so I'm going to take this y and then plug it in this formula let's do one at a time so that we don't get confused say y I start with the plus solution 4 thirds so of course y squared in any case is 4 third and I need y cubed easily just multiply the two of them so it's going to be 4 third times square root of 4 third uh, while we are at it let's also do the other one if I have started with y being the negative square root of 4 third then y cubed is going to be negative 4 third radical 4 third now mathematicians are going to insist that you just keep these uh, nice numbers the way they are as opposed to converting them to uh, decimals with your calculator uh, but if you want to go with the role of uh, using your calculator be my guest uh, uh, more often than not it's actually a lot easier to keep these so we are going to take these numbers and put it in our equation so I'll have y cube yeah so I start with y is equal to the plus uh, case so this is going to be 4 third of radical 4 third that's what y cube is minus 4 times y which is just radical 4 third and that's supposed to be x cubed minus 1 so I need to just clean this up and figure out what x is let's see how do we do that so a little bit of practice from college algebra helps us this radical is common so I can factor it so in the parentheses I'll have 4 third minus 4 
radical four third and uh, I may perhaps leave it alone for a while four third minus four what is that so you want to just uh, again you want to pause this and then figure out what X is and come back so press the pause button figure out the X and I'll continue here so 4 third minus 4 it needs to take a common denominator 4 minus 12 uh, radical 4 third let's take the 1 to the other side as well customary to write our uh, variables on the left and numbers on the right so I'm going to take this stuff to the right this becomes um, 8 third and then I'm going to write it 1 minus 8 third of radical 4 third so that's one answer <coughs> the uh, similar case for y is going to be minus radical 4 third we do the same thing everything on this side uh, is going to be negative of what we had at this stage so it's going to become minus 4 third of radical 4 third that's y cubed then I have minus 4 y y itself has a negative minus 4 times that is going to be plus 4 radical 4 third and that's equal to x cubed minus 1 do the same thing as before minus 4 third plus 4 times square root of 4 third is equal to x cubed minus 1 and that uh, simplifying this thing it becomes 8 third radical 4 third and take the one to the other side uh, let me write it just like the other one so x cubed becomes 1 plus this so the only thing that happened is that in that case I had a minus in this case I have a plus of course this is the smaller number this is a l larger one if you want to find the x you have to take cube root of this thing so cube root of 1 minus 8 third of radical 4 third and here you take the cube root of this one 1 plus 8 third of radical 4 third now if you want to take your uh, 4 out of this radical let me write it in case you uh, wrote your answer like that that's just as nice uh, so it's 1 minus square root of 4 is 2 times 8 that is 16 denominator of that is 3 radical 3 this is the same thing except that it has a plus in it so it's 1 plus 16 over 3 radical 3 so of course this is a smaller number actually it's a negative number and this is the positive number so our interval of existence is going to be from the first one which is cube root of 1 minus 16 over 3 radical 3 all the way to 1 plus 16 over 3 radical 3 so that's the exact interval of existence it is a uh, open interval meaning we don't go to the endpoints because at these endpoints that is where the derivative is going to become infinite and the uh, requirement is that y prime is supposed to be continuous and those points of, of course it would not be because it has reached infinity so let's again remind ourselves as to uh, what happened so the two x's that we found the one with 1 minus 16 over 3 radical 3 that represents this x so you find it with your calculator and you see that you got this x and the other one is uh, the plus is this one so interval of existence is from this point to that point 
the y's that we found, uh, you know, square root of 4 thirds, that is the height of these two points. So if somebody wants to in define an interval in the y-axis, it would have been the gap between those two numbers. But traditionally, we report the interval of existence on the x-axis. Okay, so this was a problem, a bit more detailed than the other ones that you do in this case. In your homework, you're going to ask to find the same thing. You can either give the exact answer or you can give a decimal answer. When you're doing decimal answer, try to let the calculator do all the steps for you so do, do you don't have a round of errors and such. Always use decimals uh, as a backup to, to make sure that your answers are in the correct ballpark, that you haven't entered uh, the numbers on your calculator uh, incorrectly or misunderstood what you entered, just to be on the safe side. Okay, so uh, after this we are going to go to another section that's going we are going to go back to uh, integrating factor method and talk about that in the next lecture. Uh, I guess I'm going to stop this uh, video at this stage and uh, uh, good luck and God bless until the next meeting we are going to have. Bye.